Up next on KBAQ TV, registrations for vaccinations of the COVID-19 vaccine at UTRGV are on hold temporarily. We'll tell you why. An RGV airport sees a difference in the amount of passengers traveling over the holidays. Keep watching to find out more. Establishments affected by COVID-19 may qualify for free pandemic relief from a UTRGV program. KBAQ TV starts now. Welcome back, Vaqueros, to a new year, new semester, and to our newly named station, KVAQ TV. I'm Ala Martinez. Today's Monday, January 11th, and at the top of this week's newscast. The UTRGV School of Medicine and its care team, UT Health RGV, have temporarily suspended registration to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Here's why. UT Health RGV announced its first shipment of Pfizer vaccine doses on December 15, 2020. A few weeks later, during the same month of December, it received its first shipment of Moderna COVID-19 vaccines in Mercedes and Harlingen. On January 3rd, the university updated the community on the recently arrived shipments of the Pfizer vaccine. So 3,001 3, B, and then about another 1,200 or so in phase 1A. So we, we have offered vaccine to over 4,000 campus community. They are administering phase 1A and phase 1B based on guidelines developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This past Thursday, UTRGV administered its second round of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. About 2,000 applicants last week alone received the second dose. The vaccines are only administered by appointment, but the university is not accepting any new registrations. 45,000 people are now on the list. UTRGV Executive Vice President for Health Affairs and the Dean of School of Medicine, Dr. John H. Krause, says UTRGV is temporarily suspending new vaccine registrations until they can get a handle on what the supply will be on a more reliable basis. We're only getting doses of vaccine in the range of two to 3,000 doses a week. Um, so. If we're getting 45,000 registrants a week, but three doses, 3,000 doses a week, we're never going to get those people covered. Dr. Krause mentions UTRGV will be opening a new registration process for UTRGV employees and students in the next following weeks. We're going to have uh, in the next week a specific registration portal that's going to be separate from the community. So then um, when doses come in, you'll give, be given an appointment time. Um, and then when you come in for the appointment, you'll bring your ID, you'll, you'll uh, show that ID, you'll register on site, you'll be given the injection. Dr. Krause says they are waiting to receive more doses to start the second round of the injection developed by Moderna. He also continues to emphasize the importance of wearing a face mask and social distancing. Reporting for KBAQ TV, I'm Alan Martinez. As some residents struggle to connect from home, the city of Bronzeville is working towards getting off the list of the least digitally connected cities. Reporter Adam Cardona has more on this. Adam? The city, in collaboration with other partners, is working towards bringing better broadband to Brownsville. I'm currently at a location on Southmost Road where residents just behind me have accessibility to broadband. Unfortunately, those just a few doors down do not. I have to be in my car even for the end of the awards. Like for my son last year, we had to literally drive down the street until we got internet on our phones because we don't have any source of internet at home. There's nothing. Brownsville resident Veronica Inojosa has lived in the same area for 17 years. She deals with the issue of not having the foundation needed for internet service providers to get her connected with broadband service. Inojosa has reached out to multiple providers in attempt to get things rolling. They said no, that they would have to send it up higher to see, I guess, like if it was like worth their time or money to give to provide for us. They had also mentioned like maybe that the people in the neighborhood would pitch in to pay for it, but when it came down to it, I guess that wasn't an option anymore either. So Brownsville Mayor Trey Mendez has made closing this digital divide a top priority. Uh, 
the plan ultimately is is to build the infrastructure, then partner with uh, service providers that would then offer the services to the residents. Um, and we have plans certainly to have low cost, very affordable plans. Please be patient. Uh, we're working on it. We're going to get it done. Mayor Mendez hopes that this plan will connect Brownsville in more ways than one. There's businesses that have not come to Brownsville or there's businesses that are looking for this type of connectivity, this type of infrastructure. And uh, for us to be able to do this and build this out makes us way more attractive to prospective businesses uh, to come to Brownsville, which is which in the end is, is a huge thing for us, right? Because it brings more revenue, brings higher paying jobs. It brings a different type of uh, a business to Brownsville. According to the city's plan, the timeline for the completion of this project is the year 2023, giving residents and businesses hope to be connected very soon. Reporting in Brownsville, Adam Cardona. Another spring semester in the pandemic, this time with more students in classes. Reporter Hector Tamez explains these numbers. A second spring semester with face masks and social distancing. Senior Vice President for Strategic Enrollment and Student Affairs, Maggie Nohosa, says enrollment for the spring 2021 semester is higher compared to last year's spring semester. Right now, we are actually up um, a little over 10%. She says that the spring 2020 semester had a little over 27,000 students enrolled. As of January 6th, the spring 2021 semester has approximately 29,000 students enrolled. The prediction is around 30,000. And so as you can see, we're, we're getting pretty close. When comparing enrollment for this spring semester to the fall 2020 semester, the fall had more students, 32,614. That's a decrease about 8.7% in the spring semester. Inojosa explains that this decrease is no cause of the pandemic. She says that UTRGV normally has a higher enrollment in the fall semester than the spring semester. At this point, we have around 17.6% of our classes in a traditional format, 15.5% of our classes in a hybrid format, 34.6% in an online asynchronous, and 32% in an online synchronous format. Inohosa adds that this semester has more in-person classes compared to the previous fall semester. UTRGV mass communication sophomore Amparo Villanueva says that she does not know what to expect from in-person classes because she did not enroll for the fall 2020 semester. I'm a little nervous since, this is, since I'm going to go in-person class rather online, but yet I'm a little excited because, I mean, I get to learn more in person. The last day for students to add or register for spring classes is this Sunday on January 17th. Reporting for KVAQ-TV, Hector Tamez. Although COVID-19 has impacted airline travel, the Brownsville South Padre Island International Airport is noting a change in the amount of passengers during the holiday season. Assistant Director of Aviation Sean Schroeder says the airport has brought back pre-COVID flights, now offering additional flights from both United and American Airlines. He also says they have seen an increase in passenger travel during the Thanksgiving weekend and the week of Christmas. Our numbers are increasing, incrementally increasing. We're actually um, beating the national average with bringing our passengers back. The airport recently unveiled a new terminal with shorter states. Its premise is to accommodate more people and additional flights, as well as bringing in future airlines and additional people to Bronzeville. He adds that the industry as a whole and at a local level are doing what they need to to increase safety and wellness for both passengers and airport employees, which hope they will increase passenger confidence as well. All I can say is, you know, let the journey begin. Let the journey begin here at, at uh, Brownsville South Padre Island Airport. We're here for you to, to, to make memories. Opening with a reduced capacity and following social distance guidelines, Jew Central is extending their hours of operation. The following extended hours began January 4th and will continue through the 15th, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday, and only via call center, chat, and email, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday. Only students requesting services will be allowed into U Central. For assistance and more information, you can contact U Central via email at ucentral at utrgv.edu or call them at 888 
882-4026. With an Economic Development Administration grant, the UTRGV Center for Innovation and Commercialization is funding two COVID-19 business support programs and offering free services to startup companies and local establishments that were affected by the pandemic. The marketing and social media program and the workspace program applications will be received on a first-come, first-served basis until all spots have been filled and will be selected by the University Selection Committee. Business and startup companies that don't have an online presence or have lost office space are eligible to apply to these programs. Selected establishments will receive free marketing and social media services and have access to the CIC co-working space for up to 20 hours per week. For more information about the services being offered and how to apply, visit the website shown on your screen. In this week's police reports, border cameras caught a man jump the U.S. border fence last Monday on the Brownsville campus. UTRGV police communications noticed the man jump the fence located behind the UTRGV and TSC facilities building. U.S. Border Patrol later detained the man without incident, the man claimed to be from Mexico. On the Brownsville campus, an officer observed a man approach and ask another man for a car ride in parking lot B1. When the officer made contact with the man, he reported that he hurt his left ankle off campus and requested emergency medical services. The man was issued a criminal trespass warning from UTRGV Properties and EMS transported the man to Valley Baptist Hospital for further evaluation. Smoke reported coming from an off-campus building. Last Thursday, an officer and the Edinburgh Fire Department arrived at the UTRGV Community Engagement for Student Success Building in regards to a report of smoking coming from the building. Investigation confirmed that the smoke was caused by a tar machine being used by construction workers while working on the roof. And now for this week's Noticias en Español. Abierto con una capacidad reducida, el Centro de Servicio Integral de UTRGV U-Central está extendiendo su horario de atención. El siguiente horario extendido comienza el 4 de enero y continuará hasta el 15, entre 8 de la mañana a 6 de la tarde del lunes a jueves, de 8 de la mañana a 5 de la tarde el viernes, y solo a través de llamadas, chat y correo electrónico de 10 de la mañana a 2 de la tarde el sábado. Solo los estudiantes que soliciten servicios serán permitidos entrar a U-Centro. Para obtener asistencia y más información, puede ponerse en contacto con Youth Central por correo electrónico en youthcentral.utrgv.edu o llamarles al 888-882-4026. That's all we have for you today. See you next time and stay safe.